I recently compared the B-Link S12 Mini, an N100 based mini PC, to a Raspberry Pi 5. The S12 Mini is B-Link's budget tier mini PC, and this is their new GTR 14, which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. This mini PC is a powerhouse. B-Link got my attention two weeks ago when they reached out about a new mini PC that they're about to launch, which has a built-in full-size PCIe slot. Now if you know anything about these PCs, one of their biggest weaknesses is graphics performance. They typically rely on an integrated GPU, and while some have reasonably powerful integrated graphics, they don't come close to having a dedicated GPU. I recently showed a way to get around this by tapping into an M.2 port on a PC with an Oculink adapter. This actually worked fairly well, but is limited by the single PCIe lane and looks like a bit of a hack job, even in a custom 3D printed case. So I'm super excited to try out a fully accessible PCIe slot directly on the PC. So let's get this PC unboxed and see what's included. I believe there are two versions of this PC. This is the less powerful Intel Core Ultra 7 version, and it also comes in an Intel Core Ultra 9 version. It looks like it's got the power supply integrated into the PC enclosure. This is a bit different to typical mini PC designs, which rely on a 19 volt laptop style power supply to power them. So included is the mini PC, a power cable, an HDMI cable, and a user manual. It is a fair bit larger than most mini PCs I've tried previously, but that's due to the integrated power supply and the need for better cooling on a more powerful CPU. You definitely get Mac Mini vibes from it. Another thing worth mentioning is that this mini PC doesn't come with a vase mount to mount it onto the back of a monitor, so it's designed to be placed onto a desk. The GTI 14 has an Intel Ultra 7 155H processor, which is essentially a CPU, GPU and NPU all on a single chip. This is a mobile processor with 24 megabytes of cache and 16 cores. Six performance cores that can run up to 4.8 GHz and eight efficiency cores that can run up to 3.8 GHz. It has an integrated Intel Arc GPU with a maximum frequency of 2.25 GHz. This also supports hardware based ray tracing, so we should be able to run some games on it to try that out. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM running at 5600 megatransfers per second and a 1 TB NVMe SSD. Taking a look around the PC, on the front we've got a USB 3.2 port, a full-size SD card slot, a USB-C port, a 3.5mm audio jack, a power indicator LED, and then a power button which also has an integrated fingerprint sensor on it. These four holes along the top are for a microphone array suited for voice recognition. The two sides have nothing on them. And on the back we've got our AC input, another USB-C port, although this one is a Thunderbolt 4 port, another 3.5mm audio jack, an HDMI port that can do 4K 60Hz, and a display port that can do 4K 144Hz. Then there's two more USB 3.2 ports above the Ethernet ports, two 2.5 gig Ethernet ports, and another two USB 3.2 ports alongside them. In addition to the 2.5 gig Ethernet ports, it's also got Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. The last port, and the one that I'm most excited to try out, is the PCIe slot. This is accessible through the bottom of the PC under this cover. Cooling is achieved by drawing air in through the mesh on the bottom, and then exhausting it through these vents at the back. Let's open it up and take a look inside. Under the bottom cover, we can see that we've got two integrated speakers, which is quite a nice addition. We've also got a dust filter to protect the components. Under the filter is the speaker assembly and our power supply. These do make it a bit more difficult to get to the RAM and SSD, but I'm going to go ahead and remove them so we can get a good look. If you do try this yourself, you need to remove the speaker assembly first, and then the power supply. This is quite an interesting design, it obviously gets AC power from the port at the back, and then feeds 19 volts DC to the motherboard through these two standoffs. Lastly, we remove this cover plate, and then we're in. Now we can see our RAM and storage. The RAM is dual channel which is good, 
and is also upgradable to a maximum of 96 gigabytes. There's also a second slot to add another M.2 NVMe storage drive. Alongside that is a removable Wi-Fi adapter and then our PCIe port. This actually looks like we've got a BI8 and a BI1 slot alongside each other. Now let's close up the bottom cover and we can then try boot it up. The GTI 14 comes with a clean install of Windows 11 Pro. And once it's set up, you can log in using the fingerprint sensor on the front, which is quite fast. I've had a look through the software and there doesn't seem to be any pre-installed bloatware or spyware. You need to be careful buying mini PCs from Amazon or AliExpress as they're often filled with nefarious software. B-Link are a reputable brand and have been around for a while so they're a safe bet. Opening up the performance monitor we can see our CPU is an Intel Core 7 Ultra 7 and it's running at a base speed of 3 GHz. We've got our 32 gigs of RAM running at 5600 megatransfers per second and our one terabyte storage drive shows up as well. Our GPU is an Intel Arc and it's sharing 16 gigs of RAM. Next we'll run two benchmarks. The first is Geekbench to test the CPU and GPU performance. The CPU benchmark took around four and a half minutes to complete and the fan was actually surprisingly quiet throughout the benchmark. You could hear it running, but it's nowhere near as loud as some of the other mini PCs I've tested. We get a single core score of 2270, and a multi-core score of 11834. So single core scores are fairly average, but the multi-core score is good. The GPU benchmark took just under 2 minutes, and we get a score of 37460. This is really good for an integrated GPU. Next let's run Fermark to test the computer's GPU and thermals. Like with the Geekbench benchmark, the fan came on almost immediately, but it wasn't all that loud for the duration of the test. We get a score of 1920. Next let's try running some games on it. We'll start with Counter-Strike 2. It was handling the home screen pretty well, so I set all the graphics onto very high. In game we get around 50 to 60 FPS. This is really good for having all settings on very high on a PC without a dedicated GPU. We'll see how it compares when we add a GPU through the PCIe slot later. Next I tried running Doom Eternal. It had a bit of a freakout when starting the game, but after fixing the aspect ratio and setting the resolution back to 1080p, it ran quite well. I had all graphics settings on Ultra Nightmare and ray tracing turned off. I was getting a little over 60 FPS fairly consistently, which is really good. Turning ray tracing on didn't make a significant difference. We only lost around 10 FPS. So for 1080p gaming on this mini PC, you really don't need an external GPU. It does really well with the integrated Intel Arc graphics. Both games are very playable, but we're going to try and see how the PCIe port performs anyway. So let's plug our GPU into the GTI 14 and get the AMD drivers installed. In Counter-Strike, with graphics set to very high like we did with the integrated GPU, we're now getting over 200 FPS which is a threefold improvement. The game is responsive and the PC seems to be running a bit cooler. The fan is noticeably quieter. Next let's try Doom. Again with the same ultra nightmare graphics settings and ray tracing turned off, we're now getting over 150 FPS. This is about two and a half times better than on the integrated GPU. I did also notice significantly faster load times with this setup. In terms of power consumption, with the PC returned to its stock state with nothing plugged into the PCIe port, it uses around 30 watts when idle on the desktop. It maxes out at a little over 80 watts with the CPU and GPU being used during gaming. The built-in speakers are a nice inclusion. They lack bass because of their sound, but they don't sound terrible. They're about on par with a mid-range laptop. Overall, I think this is a really awesome mini PC. It's ultra-portable, 
and having the ability to plug a GPU directly into it gives you the flexibility to use it for some fairly demanding gaming when you've got a bit more desk space and don't need to carry it around. It's also upgradable with non-soldered RAM and an additional M.2 slot. I have got two criticisms though. One is that the integrated power supply doesn't seem to go into a proper dormant or sleep state even when the PC is completely shut down. It has now been off overnight and the enclosure is still noticeably warm. The power meter registers about 2.5 watts with the computer shut down, so it's using power for no reason. The second is the implementation of the PCIe slot. It's very deeply recessed in the enclosure, and the access slot through the enclosure is too thin for most standard risers. I assume they're going to release some kind of proprietary dock, but it would have been nice to have the slot easily accessible through the bottom cover with a standard riser. I'm not sure what the pricing is going to look like, as they're not yet for sale at the time of making this video, but I'd imagine they'll be around $800 for the Ultra 7 series, and likely $100 more for the Ultra 9 series. Let me know what you think of the GTI 14 Ultra in the comment section below. I'll leave a link to it in the video description as soon as it becomes available. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech in electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.